for years now, there's been a huge YouTube channel that's pioneered a simple way to test how to check if your car's low enough or not. It's often referred to as the shoe test. You simply try to fit a shoe between the wheel and guard of your car, and if it fits easily, your car's too high and you should lower it. We here at Brownie's Garage are big fans of the channel, but feel like after all these years that perhaps that test could be improved upon. Look at that, we can nearly fit the whole wedge in there. Better get to work, that's not going to cut it. Hey there and welcome to Brownie's Garage. I've changed into some more comfortable footwear and we're ready to get working on this car. Today we'll be working on my BAXR6 Falcon, but the process will be the same for any BF Falcons as well as I think it'll be quite similar for FG and maybe even FGX Falcons. We're going to be doing this on somewhat of a budget, so I've gone for some secondhand King Springs we've got here. The fronts are super lows and the rears will be super super lows or ultra lows depending on how you refer to those. Now that may sound like a really weird combo going with lower springs in the rear than the front and you may be wondering why would you want your car to look like a dog dragging its bump across the carpet. That's not what we're going for. These cars from the factory actually sit a little bit higher in the rear and it's quite common to use a combination like this to level it out a little bit. Fingers crossed, let's see how that one goes. As far as the shocks go, people do use the factory shocks with these springs, but we've gone for something a bit more comfortable, hopefully a bit more safe. So I've gone with a mid-range Monroe GT Sport shock. These are to suit lowered springs and hopefully they'll work quite well with this. As you can see, we've already gone ahead and assembled those shocks and spring assembly for the front. And we might cover that in a future video just quickly on how that's done. It is pretty simple, you do need spring compressors. Uh, and of course, anytime you're doing something like that, these springs are under a lot of tension. So you need to be quite careful when doing that. Uh, if you're not confident, take it to a shop. They can be done quite quickly and easily for you and then you'll be ready to go. Just be careful that the orientation of the top bolts are lined up with this lower mount on your shock how they were when they come out. Otherwise, you're gonna have a lot of trouble getting those in the front. Uh, they obviously need to be orientated in the right way, so they slot in. You can adjust it once it's in the car, you can turn the bottom, but it is really, really difficult. So make sure you just do it while you're at the bench and you'll have an easier time of it. Lastly, we've also got these aftermarket bump stops for the rear. The fronts are fine, but the rears in these are actually quite big and it's not unusual to see a car that isn't even that low just sitting on the factory bump stops, which I imagine would be a horrible, horrible ride. So what we've got is these white line bump stops. They are quite cheap at just $35, I believe. And your factory ones being, you know, what are we, over 15 years now, they're probably shot anyway and about time to replace those. So it's a good chance to do that now with these white line bump stops. Oh, and I nearly forgot those rear shocks. We've got a fairly new set of KYB shocks on this. They're just OEM replacements, but hopefully they'll be okay. We'll see how they go. They run about $190 brand new. Uh, any part numbers and links for anything I've purchased new, I'll have down in the description. So check those out if you need it. But running through it, Roughly uh, a second hand set of full set of King Springs that will come with a factory front shock normally because people don't like taking them out. Will run you about $200 if that's all you're going to do. If you're going to do this setup exactly as I have, you'll also have about $315 for these Monroe GT Sport front shocks, $35 for these bump stops, and as I said, about $190 for those rear shocks. So the way I'm doing it, uh, will be in total probably about $750, but I already had some of this stuff, so it's not too bad. Uh, you can do it cheaper if you pick the right stuff up secondhand in, in better deals than this. Okay, I think that's it. I'm gonna jack the car up. We'll get a start, and I'll start running through how to actually do this job.
Okay, so the car's all jacked up and we're going to start working in the front, but we have to start in the engine bay. We need to get to those top shock nuts underneath here and on the other side. So there'll be two 10 mil bolts here on your overflow and there's a small plastic locating tab on the other side. Then you can just lift this out the way and you'll see those top shock nuts and bolts. They're 17 mil. Just undo those quickly. Leave one slightly threaded on for now. We'll get rid of that later when we're ready to go. Then moving over to the passenger side, we have to do similar again. Got the airbox in the way on this side, but that's easy. It's just the four clips around the airbox and your hose clamp. Lift that off and put it out the way for now. And then you can try and get into the free top shock nuts on this side as well. So front two, really simple, same as the other side. The third one is actually in under your ECU here. It's quite a pain to get to. This is where ratcheting spanners are amazing. So get your ratcheting spanner in under there. You'll only be able to get a click or two on your ratcheting spanner, but it'll be much better than sliding a normal spanner on and off all the time to try and get that off. Have some patience and you'll get it. Uh, a ratcheting spanner through this hole is normally how I do it. Okay, let's move down into the wheel well and we'll have a look down there. And working down on the front passenger side here, same uh, passenger side and driver's side, but this is where we're working for now. So first you wanna remove this brake line from this small bracket here. Uh, it is a little bit difficult sometimes to do. There's a slot inside this rubber, so you'll need to twist that rubber a bit to try and get it to line up and then push it out of that bracket there. We can then move down to the sway bar end links. You'll need to do these on both sides. So just have these disconnected on both sides so that you can lower this whole assembly a bit further without that sway bar interfering. So you need that on both sides, just undo it um, and then get to work. So that one will come off. You can then do the lower um, shock mount bolt there. So that nut is a 22 mil and the rear of it's a 24 mil bolt. Undo that one and take that out, that'll be out the way. Then you can move to this upper uh, ball joint bolt here. So uh, that one there is a 18 mil, I believe. Undo that, pull the bolt out, and then this hub should drop away from this upper ball joint. Uh, you'll then be able to, with some assistance, ideally, but you can do it yourself, push this whole hub down low enough to be able to get this shock and spring assembly out. So just be careful, your brake line, you don't wanna stretch that too much. And there is an ABS sensor that goes in between that lower shock mount there. Uh, ideally, push it up into the car, the spring and shock, push this hub down, and then you should see where you can sort of work it out. Uh, remember to undo that nut on the top of the shock mount there. Okay, we'll see how we go on this one. Okay, as you've hopefully seen, we've got the front buttoned up. Uh, that's gone pretty well. As I said though, make sure your spring and shock assembly is lined up properly. Ours wasn't, we had to go back to the bench again and do it. It's really hard once there's tension on that spring. So spring compressors are just about a must have for this job. Uh, you would have also seen us using the jack um, to help position that hub assembly where we needed it. Make sure you use uh, a rubber insulator like we did or some timber so it's not metal on metal on that disc. So we'll also use the jack for the rear where we're moving over to now. Again, use some timber or rubber between your jack and the rotor, but be extra careful on the rear. The rears have this guard. If you bend that into your rotor, it's gonna make all sorts of horrible noises while you're driving down the road. So be careful of that one. Okay, working on the rear. This is the rear passenger side. Uh, they're quite similar to the front in some ways. We want the shock absorber detached so you can either unbolt it from the top here or the bottom at the back here. I'll go from the bottom because I've had trouble in the past getting this pushed into here. So that's why I'll do it that way. We'll also unbolt from here, this upper control arm, I believe it is. So it's a 18 at the front and a 14. No, that's not right. 
whatever it is, I'll put it in there. It's an 18 and I think a 16. Um, that'll come out then. Uh, you'll also have to do same as the front, your sway bar end links. So I'll show a shot of that here now. You wanna unbolt that so that you can drop this down enough again. Without that, it'll fail on that sway bar. With those things off, you should be right again with hopefully assistance. That's made the job a lot easier. You'll really struggle without it. I have done it in the past, but it's so much easier with assistance. So maybe get someone out just to stomp on this. Not too much force, but that will push it down enough. Again, watching brake lines and that sort of thing. You should then be able to wedge your spring out. So this is the spring assembly we've got that's going in it. This is actually from the other side. We've already started there. There are these insulators that will be in there. The top one, they'll both have a slot in them, but only the top, I believe. There's a, a metal actually up in there above the spring that you want this to line up with. Otherwise, just make sure that your perch is sitting right. Shouldn't be too important, but you can do it easy enough to do that. Okay, lastly, in the back here, we've got our bump stop that we mentioned. This is actually a factory bump stop that's been cut down. It's quite a popular option for some people doing it on a budget, but this thing is shot. It's just about coming off now. So it should be easy enough to pull off. I'll just get a screwdriver in there and pull it off. The one on the driver's side was actually worse than this one. It just crumbled and fell to pieces. So I've already done that and popped the white line bump stop on there. One thing on that, those white line bump stops are so rigid, I had a terrible time getting that on. I was pretty much melting the rubber or whatever it is uh, with heat just to try and get it on there. So maybe look at other options. That white line, uh, I just had a horrible time getting on. So perhaps there's another option that's not quite as rigid. Okay, I think that's everything. We'll get back to uh, knocking the rear out and we'll come back to you. There it is, job done. It's not completely slammed and the driveway probably isn't doing it justice at the moment. We're not completely flat, but I'm more than happy to, with it. Let's throw to some quick before and after shots to give you a better idea of what we're looking at. As you can hopefully see, the rear has come down quite a bit. The front is still perhaps a touch higher than I'd like, but overall, I'm really happy with how it looks now. It will still need a wheel alignment, but even on this quick drive I've taken without it, it does feel much better. I'm not gonna use the cliche that it handles like a go-kart because it doesn't, and I never expected it to, but it's definitely improved. And even over the bumps, it is quite comfortable. So I think this is quite a good middle ground between going silly low and still having a decent, comfortable ride. But let's get to the ultimate test. Back to the shoe test. Let's see how we've gone there. How's it look? Much better. Not fitting a full wedge in there anymore like we were before, even with it on a slight lean. It's probably closer to a fong test now than a shoe test, so that's great. And that brings us to the end of this one. If you've enjoyed, please consider giving it a like, sharing it around, and subscribing to the channel. There'll be plenty more coming up on this car and many others. As always, thanks for watching, guys, and cheers.